Hey, it's Friday. Thanks again for listening to Stage Door. If you've been sitting around listening and to all the episodes that have been coming in, you've probably noticed a pattern. You've probably noticed that we're doing a lot of shows here, and that's because it's show season. What are you going to do, right? we got to cover these shows. That's what we do. We're theater fans. We love going to see these shows. You should be big theater fans, too. Go out there. Support these guys. These are your friends, your family. They're going to come to all your shows. You should go and do the same. Support them, okay? Like today's fabulous guests. Dylan and James, who are going to single-handedly convince you that you have to go see Rocky Horror Show. <laughs> so, so you guys, it's cool, though, because you guys are actually in two Rocky Horror Shows, or Dylan, are you only one So two? it's a crazy time of year this year, um, and I am actually in three different versions of Rocky Horror currently. Um, there is the 3B Productions, which I think goes out in about two weeks on oh, yeah. October 1st and 2nd. And then there is a fundraiser that I'm a part of that is Rocky Horror themed in the, um, where's the love pit at? Oh, Fremont. In Fremont. Fremont yeah. But it's actually in Clyde, Ohio. Oh. At the Alley. Um, is it in an alley or it's, I don't know yet. <laughs> no, so kidding. we're going to find out, <laughs> but sweet it just is. drive around. It probably is in an show. alley, I mean, sweet. So it's, it's in Clyde, Ohio, and it is a fundraiser for Fremont pride. Um, and then I'm also in stone productions, Rocky. Horror. That's the other one yes. that, that you had told me about. Okay. Um, so you're actually in three. It's fine. You can't like, get enough. It's the it. time of the year. Yeah, but yeah. Are I'm you gonna... in the same character in every one of them? I'm not. So oh. in three B's and in the fundraiser, I am playing Frankenfurter. And then in stone productions this year, I have the privilege of being Riff Raff. Okay. Why'd you point to James right when you said so, stone productions? Uh, so I'm Stone Productions is my theater company. Oh, this is insane. Yeah. So when I walked in, when Ron and I walked in to Grinders to talk about possibly doing a live recording at your location, you should have been like, we love you. Come on in here and do this. It sounds like I didn't know that what a connection you had, obviously, with you. You played it real smooth. You yeah. Well, smooth well, and that's the thing. Well, because we're too old. No, dorky looking not at guys, all. You're it's like, just no, because. No. no, it's because like that atmosphere. Uh-huh. I'm always so tuned into like the business uh, like and making sure everything's like so good and perfect for everybody that like if it was just if it would have just been like us in there and no one else I would have like came and sat down and chatted with you but like anytime like someone walks through that door I'm always like on honestly that sounds exactly accurate you were very like professional (laughs) you were very all and you walk in today and so professional when we met you first time I didn't even recognize you today yeah (laughs) you're saying I'm not I'm not professional right now no no (laughs) you can't you're all casual over there exactly I love it though I love so we are going to record at your place at some point in time then now that I know who you are even more so that's great so you're stone productions awesome yes so then the other lovely thing to it is that James is actually the first person who really put me into drag. Oh. Um, and that's why this show kind of has a really good, like, full circle moment for us is because it's the, fir- the first time I ever did Rocky Horror was with Stone Productions. Um, it was just a phantom because they've done it every year since... 2015. 2015. Gotcha. And um, I love Rocky Horror. And the first time I did it, I was just in the ensemble and I got a good nibbling for it. And then (laughs) (laughs) 3B has done it the last uh, five years. And then... Let's let's go back, okay? So now (laughs) we got all the shows. So you're doing those three shows. But let's bring it all the way back and let's talk about what Rocky Horror actually is. Well, I went up first of all. James, what are you in? You're so in your production, I assume. Um, yeah, I, I normally I normally direct and produce, and this year I I wanted to um, since this last year has been just a long, stupid intermission, right? For <laughs> theater people, basically. So in uh, not stupid, I shouldn't say that. I was wondering, but <laughs> no, that's, uh, that's stupid. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So okay. um, I I a good friend of mine. I was like, hi, well, you want to put your director hat on this year so I can maybe just like audition and be in it. And I didn't even care if I was playing Phantom Number Two, or Sixteen, whatever. But I'm actually playing Brad. Oh, nice. So I'm I'm like it's like the I've played almost every role in this show except for Brad, um, and Rocky. But I don't ever want to play Rocky because no. Uh, okay, so, you, so now, now let's go back. Now let's go back as somebody who's never seen this show. 
and tell me who the hell Brad is and all these Wait, other. Wait, you've kinds never of things. seen? No, Rocky why would I, dude? I am a moron. Okay, so this is this. Is <laughs> I what sat we do. in the room next door and took promos for this show. This is like... what, yeah, I know you did. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yes, I totally forgot about this. And yeah, you, yeah. so that, that you were probably on the really lips. confused then. If you like... <laughs> no, it's just you know, there's always a ton of shows going on and there's everything happening and it, it just never has seemed to work out. And I think part of the reason is because my kids go to Toledo School for the Arts and this is always an October show oh and yeah. that's when tsa generally has their show so we're just kind of you know balls to the wall or whatever excuse i have and that's all well, ours well and, and ours is in november so <laughs> oh. you could maybe come see it it's, okay it's the see. first weekend in november <laughs> okay oh so you get for, you're the so three b's is, is a whole month before yes. Stones is. okay yes. cool so explain to me everything it's like start from the beginning i'm a baby here i don't know anything. um so <laughs> Rocky Horror is essentially you uh, get started with a lovely intro of, I would say, getting you hyped into the scene of what you're about to go back and enjoy because it's definitely more of a time period piece to a, to an aspect. Yeah. Um, the show was originally, it originally came out in 1975, but I feel like... Mm -hmm the show didn't really gain momentum until like the eighties and the nineties. And it started to become this cult classic of like just weirdness. And so you start out the show and you have Brad majors and his, <laughs> and his wife, Janet Vice. Can we just call Kyle Janet? Cause I just want to call it say, damn it, Janet. Yeah. The the yeah. Episode. Um, we'll get you a wig. <laughs> <laughs> Should have brought one. <laughs> right. I think we got some here in this house. I watch the photographer. We got all sorts of shit back there. So um, so the show starts out and it's your very like traditional couple, as you would say, the ingenue couple of most musical theater scenarios. Right. They're um, the like cookie cutter, uh, like I love you. Yeah, like, like I'm from Denton, Ohio. <laughs> which is where it takes Yeah, where, that's yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, so the two of them, they fall in love, they get engaged, and then they go... In, in, in like, two minutes. Two minutes. That all happens. Also real. This is a right. Disney movie very, already. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> like I said, very ingenue. Like, I love you. <laughs> and then the two of them set off on a journey where they are going to the place where they first met, which is their friend, uh, Dr. Scott, which tag that name for later and which as you do as a couple and you get engaged the first person you go tell not your parents you go tell your ex like a tutor from college that's 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 where you go that's healthy sure. yeah that's a healthy thing i'm it's, sure there was you know, no kind of you know attraction there between anybody yeah <laughs> um so on their journey they have a flat tire and they end up uh, going through the rain and everything to find a castle that is basically planted in the middle of nowhere. This is Ohio. Yeah. Castle in this Ohio. is Ohio, apparently. Yeah. You know? We have tons that of That makes sense, right? There's yeah. a castle in the middle of a cornfield. Yeah, so. this is, like, we're really selling this to you, but it's about to take a turn, so. <laughs> awesome, I like it. <laughs> so they arrive at this castle, and their objective is to find a telephone, so that way they can go and get, get their flat tire fixed and all these things. But as we know, castles don't have phones, asshole. Right. <laughs> like, uh, so they get to this castle and they're greeted by a very creepy, what would you call him? Like a handyman, sort of like the, like the Jeeves the butler, butler oh, yeah. if you will, um, who has a, a, like a very like odd disposition about him. Like you can't quite put your finger on it and you don't want to. Um, <laughs> you don't know where that his finger's going to go. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. And it, like him. Um, and that's the character of Riff Raff who, who Dylan is playing. Um, of course. The weird one. And <laughs> not me. And, uh, and there's also um, Riff Raff's, um, I'll get into that more. It's kind of. The other maid. The, of yeah. The, the, the maid. Her, so her name like, is Magenta. They're there, and then you also meet um, Columbia, who is a very energetic, like, sprightful, um, trying too hard to fit in, but just there for no reason. Like, you don't, like, why are you here? Like, why are you in this castle? Like, just to hang out? Cool. Yeah. Um, 
And they they arrive at this point. Now, now, should we continue with the entire story and ruin it for the listeners? Yeah. I, or should we just summarize a little bit? Like, I don't want to, I mean, there could be people like me listening to this who are like, oh, I don't know. So what, yeah, I don't want to completely ruin it because, you, you know. Oh, no. Or I, should I, we assume that everybody's seen this and I'm the only moron? No, there's it. probably, there's people <laughs> who haven't seen it. We should assume that, Kyle. It, it's just, um, <laughs> so they, they arrive there. They get greeted by these odd characters. It's a little creepy. Um, and... Um, the master of the house yeah. then shows up. Shows up, and the master of the house is having a party. Um, to he makes a he makes a creation. Oh, um, the creation is essentially his very own special plaything, uh-huh. if you will. You are uh, being now. You're being real vague. <laughs> uh, but like, and again, like this all the whole this is all happening, and this couple is just like we we literally just want. To, this is great. Good we for you. We just want to make a phone call. How, we just want to make a phone call. Like what? Um, and then, like obviously, then the the master of the house takes a liking to this couple and um, you know visits them in their bedroom. They're oh. innocent. <laughs> they basically uh. get entangled into the what's going yeah. on in the whole house. <clears throat> so and then um, uh, and he's he's like a, um, a very scantily clad master of the house, if you will. Um, if you're familiar with Tim Curry, Tim Curry ri- originated the role on the very first Broadway production and then also carried over into the film. Um, that was the original, like, Pennywise from It. Um, yeah, he was yeah, Pennywise. Yeah. yeah, he was, he was in a a Legend. Ma- this movie yes, Legend. Master wow. of Playing yeah, he a Villain. Played darkness. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Master of Playing like, a Villain. I wish my voice could just be manipulated to sound like yeah. darkness in that movie. He's, <laughs> well, he's I just insane. saw they, they redid it in 2016 on. For a TV series, and he was Rock. a, a ge- he was yeah. a doctor. He he played the narrator. So there's like a narrator guy that like just pops in every once in a while to like you know make sure. Because I will tell you, as if you've anyone who's never seen this, if you're listening to our synopsis of this, you're already probably like, what in the <laughs> entire world is this about? Um, everything. It is and, literally yeah. about everything. Well, Dylan had said earlier, he's like, oh, I was over here getting photos for it. Well, he, he's on lips. He's on these giant lips. What yep. is the deal with the lips? So the lips are like, it's an iconic thing. Um, it, 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 the film is what made it iconic. The film version, mm-hmm. um, the opening s- um, song is science fiction double feature, and it's an uh, um, it, it's like, it pays like, it's like a tribute to all of the 60s and 70s sci-fi B-films that people would like Go to the theater and see late night with mm-hmm. a late night like double feature, and the drive-in essentially. Yeah, right. and then like, in the um, in the original stage production and in the stage productions that you would see if you see three Bs and ours is, um, it's almost like the um, ushers are like ushering in the people who are coming to see the show that want to yell things out and throw props and all that stuff. Like that's what. But um, in the film. That is done by just a big, it's a overly painted red mouth that's actually, um, fun fact, Richard O'Brien, who wrote Rocky Horror, sings it, and then Patricia Quinn, who plays Magenta in the film, um, it's her mouth. So, so the movie starts on a mouth. Yeah, it's okay, literally just you. a that's mouth. It's hear. like yeah. like that's where the red lips. That's yeah. why the lips was always like one of the bigger iconic symbols of it is because you get the very start of it. It's just these set of lips that come gotcha. out of nowhere. It's like and this, it takes up the whole screen. They're yeah. singing it's this. Just these gigantic it's like a Rolling Stones ripoff or who ripped well, who off. I mean, who did it first? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> they Somebody made, did something. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's that, that's like, that's what the, the okay. lips are. All right. See, see, I'm learning shit here. I'm learning. Yeah. See, the lips have become such a staple. Like literally the other day I was at forever 21 and there was a sweater with lips on it. And I was like, Oh, I have to own this because <laughs> Rocky horror season is upon us. And yeah. They're everywhere. Like I've seen like all kinds of like, though, like there's like the one that's painted like a rainbow, like dripping, which was your logo was, for a yeah. while. Yeah. yeah I um, kind of made like, that by the way. You can literally, are you the one that made that? Yeah. Oh, Look at nice. That. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, no, I loved it. Like no, I've cool. seen it's it cool. on, right. Like, like I've been in like random stores and just yeah. seen that, and I'm like, or I've seen people walking around wearing it. And I'm like, I bet you they don't even have any damn idea what, what that's that. Yeah, Je- Jesse Burnell asked me to do that, so I don't want to take credit for like coming up with it or anything. But yeah. he, he said, "Can you do this?" And I made it, and that's on our, on the poster. No, I love it, and it's fantastic. Yeah. As the year that we did the Pride Float, at, yeah, oh, uh, I remember that. Yeah, everything. I think that was the year that we did the Rainbow Melted Lips. And yeah, I d- I've done three different, four different versions of Rocky Horror because. When we first started, I did the original lips, 
Then I did the rainbow lips. Then I did the lips with the mask on it because we did the yep, COVID that version. Was last now, year's now we're production. back to the regular <laughs> one. So it's like we've been able to incorporate and all this. And you've never stuff. seen it. That's and what I was just going to say. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. I was like, wait, what's wrong with you? I'm a giant. My curiosity would have like killed me. I'd have been like, I need to know I'm what the hell I'm doing. I'm a giant chocolate starfish. Okay. I'm sorry. See, I, I, I go back to that 80s version. Well, that's when, when I got first watched Rocky Horror. And I literally went to a theater once and there were six people in the theater. Four of us and this one guy who knew it, and mm-hmm. I mean knew it, and we were sitting there, and all of a sudden he turns to us and he goes, "You want to learn this?" <laughs> well, hell yeah, why not? <laughs> we had plenty to drink, so we're up, you know, grabbing the breast and the screen and doing. I mean, we're playing the whole part as he's talking us through this. Well, for now, the rest of the time you go, you got to be able to play it, you know, uh, with, yep. in, in the theater. So, yeah. in the screen, in the, in your version. Am I bringing squirt guns? Am I bringing toast? Am I bringing so stuff like this? You're, so we encourage we? Um, Stone Productions. Yeah, because like we've got we, two, yeah. two or three shows now. Um, so and the 3B does too. Like, yeah. So what, we, what um, the stage versions, a lot of times what they'll do, they'll either A, provide you a like prop kit of things that are A care package, safe. if you were. Tom almost um, wore a poncho to this. Or yeah, I was going to wear it, yeah. We, yeah. And then, um, or, and like sometimes, like, and we've done that before. We've done the prop kit. Um, Stone Productions also like we post something that of things you're allowed to bring in because we are and like Stone Productions is at the Collingwood Art Center. I should probably mm. you know so okay. um, with it being an older historic building, we're like maybe not um, maybe not food. Please don't throw food. We're not trying to get like vermin. You know it is <laughs> it is November, so they're already trying to get in the building as it is. Like. You know, um, I mean, the cast loves to have a nice, like, you know, club sandwich later. So, Uh, toast and yeah, there's toast and popcorn sometimes is typically thrown throughout the numbers. So, do you have a suggestion what to bring when they see all toast? Yeah, I was gonna say, so you post a list. That's (laughs) amazing. Most most theater companies will post an approved list because I know with 3B as well, we will typically post, like, this is what you can bring to our space. So, don't bring batteries to throw. No, like nothing like <laughs> unless um, your theater approves it. Yeah, <laughs> the to- the toe scene um, is only in the film. Okay. So in the stage version, they don't even say that line. So it would really be silly to throw toast. Um, I will tell you, it has happened. There's <laughs> been times that probably where, doesn't stop people. Yeah, no. There's been times if I where bring I was like toast to the theater, and I don't get to throw it. I'm, we I'm, had, I'm that person. That I would probably bring toast to a yeah. production just to be like, here's the toast. <laughs> we had a we had a, a, a season one year. We did um, uh, there's a song. In the show called Planet Schmanet, and <laughs> creative there, man. Right? Um, what up, everybody? Come on in. We're doing a po- hey, hey, these guys here. See, we got we got some guests coming in. Who we got here? We have Gabriel, and I can't see who's behind the other one. Is that Esther? Hey, come on in. Oh, see, it's, it's renewal. Now, are you guys gonna go see the show? Have you? Are you guys gonna go see Rocky Horror? Yes. Uh, Oh. Amazing. Can, I hope everybody can hear that, but Esther's talking. She says she actually worked at the Mommy Indoor for a couple of years. And in fact, nice. last night she said she was actually in the basement. So that was interesting. Oh, you guys going upstairs? Indoor? Yeah, yeah. I, I, but I love working, working the Rocky Horror preview show. Come closer, Esther. Come closer so we can hear you. <laughs> You're allowed to be on too, see? So go ahead. So you love working the Rocky Horror or yeah, being I in love, it? When I, when I worked there, working the Rocky Horror show was always so fun. Because the whole cast is very fun. It's a very fun musical. I really enjoy it. We're, we're seeing it this year in a group. Awesome. awesome. The fun. more the merrier. Get as many people as you yeah. can, right? And then come see come see, um, come see, see this one play a different role in the Stone Productions one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. And Stone Productions is in when? Tell us. So, uh, November 5th and 6th. November. Is, is that a, if that's the Friday and Saturday, I don't have a calendar for me. Let me but <laughs> it's a Friday <laughs> at 8 o'clock, and then we're doing a Saturday at 8 and midnight. <laughs> yes, it is November 5th and 6th at the Collingwood Arts Center. See, so if something happens and you can't go to this one, or go to both of them, why not? Yeah, right? go to both of them. I bought nine tickets yesterday. Oh. Sweet, that's fantastic. <laughs> I would buy nine tickets for ours. No, <laughs> this podcast is really working. People who, get right into the microphone. Who are the nine people? Do you know who they're for? Oh, man. It's me, Gabe, yeah. Bridget, Tatum, uh, Cullen, there's four other people, Sid. Four other. Wow. Oh, yeah. Sid Vicious, yeah. 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 There's, there's two more. Sid Vicious. I don't, yeah, I don't know who the other ones are, but yeah. They'll be there. Somebody, you, somebody will awesome. take the no, tickets. That's awesome. Though. I love it. I love that you're going and just having fun and just being goofball. So, so hurry and get your tickets. They're going fast. Yeah, right obviously here. they're right going fast. The is that the 3B one or is that the Stone Production one? That's the 
Mummy B one. And okay. I know from from working at the Mummy Door, it sells out every year. So awesome. I'm like getting them in advance. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I'm so excited to see your show. I have to run. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was great meeting you. Bye. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> as well. All right. So that was a nice little fun interruption. I, you know, no, actual like... fans of the show walking in. And yeah. That was well. Awesome. And it's so crazy to see like such a younger yeah. generation still know what Rocky is because yeah. we were just talking before we came here. Like uh, your first introduction to Rocky was. Oh like, my god! I shouldn't have ever seen it when I saw it. Why? Like, Why? Because I was right? probably way too young. Well, were you ten? Um, maybe. Okay, <laughs> I'm just saying. No, I mean, I guess I wasn't too young. I, I, half of that, I didn't. It went over my head. I didn't know what was going yeah, on, and, obviously, and, but and still this... going over my head. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Honestly, like that. Like to to obviously. this <laughs> giant tangent we took. But if like if someone were to say like, what is Rocky Horror about? And the honest answer is, I don't. No one knows. <laughs> Is that why it was a total like bomb when it came out as a movie? Is that it my did, yeah, it, it, that? It's, it, it's a strange movie. I mean, if, if you just sit and watch it, it's almost I don't want to say it's unwatchable, but you have to you, watch you it need again. The participation yeah. to you have to, to watch make it, make it like fun. You, you have to watch it once, <laughs> and then watch it again. But the second time, high. watch it. Wa- I always say mm, yes, <laughs> that that helps. But and then maybe see it. Yeah, like, watch it there's... or see it and go with people who know it because you'll be like, why are we yelling at the people on stage? It's fun. It's yeah. just fun. And we yell back at you. It's like, <laughs> literally, it's very interactive. But yeah. Even if you don't know it, you got to start sometime. Right. I mean, that's just, how I did. I started just, once yeah. in like, Why am I throwing a hot dog? Like, what is going on? Yeah. Throwing a hot dog? See, I don't know exactly. shit about this You're, show. There's a whole moment where, honestly, this is oh, my favorite musical That's what moment. we were saying. <laughs> we were saying before our guest stepped in. So there's a song called Planet Schmanet. And um, it's it's the part of the show where I like to say that um, Richard O'Brien and Lou Adler, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know if you'll hear this, but if you, I, I hope you will. That'd be awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's you table. don't, I don't know what you did when you were writing these lyrics or what you were on, <laughs> but literally there's a part where Frankenfurter is like, don't get hot and flustered, use a bit of mustard. And then everyone's like, you're a hot the dog. The entire ensemble just breaks and, out into the, you're a hot dog. Yeah, and then people just throw <laughs> hot dogs. Like, so it has nothing at all to do no, with anything. No, it is. Because his name is Dr. Frankenfurter, oh, so you're a hot okay. dog. Like, I just, like, you... I don't know what they were, it what is happened, cle- but like, it is my favorite moment of the musical. Yeah. The point where the first year that I played Frankenfurter, we tried to do this bit where like one of the phantoms brought a hot dog on stage to me that I could try to like eat really quickly during that entire, <laughs> it failed very miserably. Oh. And like, I ended up spitting out majority of the hot dog onto the gurney that was on stage at the moment. But I was just checking to make sure Richard O'Brien was still with us. Right. Yes. And he is. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. He well, so he'll get this message. Man. I hope okay. you hear this, About Richard. being on mushrooms right. while he, he was in the show. Yeah. He would love yeah. it. He, would, You know what he'll do? Well, what he'll do is he'll, he'll love it, and then he'll instantly look up all of these theater companies we're talking about, make sure they pay their royalties. That's what he'll do. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he'll do first, because he, he doesn't should. have enough money. Yeah, he's back there cashing. <laughs> <back there>. Right. <laughs> Rocky is just one of those shows that it's like it's about everything. It literally. Like, I mean, they're it's about nothing but everything. They're like transsexual aliens from a planet that wow. called tra- uh, you know they're from a planet called transsexual. Oh, but they're like transvestite aliens that are like super glamorous and like can sing really well. So it sounds like it's okay to spoil this because it's just insane. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I well, mean, no matter how many times you see the show, I there's could, always going to be something that's like what did I just watch? Yeah, we could like, literally we could we could go into complete detail of the entire synopsis and people will still come see it and be like I didn't hear that part. <laughs> is it really just about participation, though? Is that what the show is about and I mean, just yeah, having a great time? It's like the tagline of the show is don't dream it, be it. So it's literally like any, like it, I guess if you want to get, if you want to get like beautiful and serious, the yeah. message of the show is like expressing yourself however you want to. Yeah. There's a lot of different messages throughout the entire production as far as like, who the audience is and what that message like resonates with them. There's a lot of like, there's a lot of sex positivity that comes with Rocky horror because at the time that the musical was written and produced, you had musicals like hello Dolly and a chorus line and all of these like very grand musicals that are very, there's just a lot of like, 
romanticism about them um and rocky horror yeah they just got down to the business oh it got down to the business like (laughs) they're like we don't need all that so it's very like sex positive it's very lgbtq positive very i mean like in the 70s are you kidding like like uh, if a man you know comes out in like a fishnets and like lingerie like that was not something that was very like you know people didn't just stand up and start applauding right like they do now right and And that's like i would say and you could probably also agree with me like when you play frankenfurter and you come out in that audience and you just hear that applause when you're stepping best feeling ever and people are just cheering for you for being like yeah, this representation of who you are, like I played, I played Frankfurter like once. Um, it was in 2015 when we did it, and it was so amazing because the audience reaction immediately calmed me down for how ridiculous I looked and was dressed and or or not dressed actually I should say or just felt so, you know yeah like You're I was like because like, I was like I can't I'm like not a I'm not like I mean like I'm comfortable in my skin but like I'm not your someone who would you normally would think would dress like that. Yeah, rip like me. Yeah, yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm not, like, I'm not. Well, you also even think in your traditional musicals, like, your lead character walks on stage. That person always, it's always that that little skinny, Yeah, it's either, it's that ingenue blonde, or. And I wasn't that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I was the chubby, purple-haired, like, if people didn't know me, they're like, I don't know, is that, oh, that's a handsome lesbian. Uh, (laughs) Like... So, um, <laughs> and if you do know me, I you relate. know that that is literally totally 100% accurate. Um, but like, <laughs> no, like they, they, it was great though. Cause I was like, this is awesome. This feels so cool. And it does. And I will say like Rocky horror is one of those things too. Like if you go and you enjoy yourself, you literally walk out feeling a little bit more confident about life. Yeah. And Even just- though it's weird, it's just, you do like. I think one of the biggest messages, because there's one of my best friends absolutely hates the musical. Like <laughs> every time, she, every year I'm in name it, her, she, name her, call her out. Her name is Rhiannon Barlow. Oh, okay. And we so say it proudly because funny. she tells me all the time how much she hates the musical. There you go. But like, she's my <laughs> best friend. Rihanna, and she comes and sees me Aww. every year that I do this show to the point where people are like, oh, are you going to go see Rocky? And she goes, yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> and people look at her like, what do you mean? Your your best friend plays Frankenfurter. And she's like, yeah, and he knows I hate the show. It's so weird. It's so random. It's so like... It is Rocky Horror is a very polarizing show. Like you do, you either love it or you hate it, or you like, or yeah. it's just, or you go because your friends are going. And you're like, oh, it's this thing we do every year, or whatever. Yeah. I my favorite thing is like to see the people in the audience who. Um, so there's this thing if you've never seen it, which you're about to do this. This yes. is going to be you. I'm about to see it. Um, it's you're, I got to see it on a different night. Is Gabe got to mark the virgin? Yeah. Like. You're like if you're if you've never seen Rocky Horror, you're labeled a virgin. Oh. And someone again, will come you. out into the... <laughs> That's what it takes, Kyle. And whatever so, it takes, I get to be a virgin again. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> someone, someone from the cast, or um, um, many someones yeah. from the cast, will come out and they Better will have a kegels. red... Oh. They, yeah, they'll have like a red <laughs> lipstick. And they'll oh. like ask, have you ever seen the show before? And, um, ooh, wait, do I want it to... Whatever. So uh, yeah, the, yeah, they'll literally good. like take the lipstick and put a giant red V on your forehead so everyone knows. <laughs> you gotta mark the virgin. Of yeah. Course. I guess I got lucky. I went, first time I went and saw it was literally six people. Six other virgins. And so I got my virginity popped. Popped. <laughs> yeah, <nice>. Silently. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, and it's it's great. And um, But you see, like that, or you see the people who like, you know, you could tell that they didn't know anything about the show so they went and like looked up something on like Pinterest ah. on how to dress and they've got their like spirit Halloween version of the costume. Gotcha. <laughs> well, I just told Gabe he has to dress up for this stuff. That's true, right? Should yeah. he dress up? Yes. You you should. Go tell him. Go you, tell him after we're done here. Go tell him he needs to dress I'll, up and I'll shoot him. Gabe a message and make yeah. sure even yeah. if he's uncomfortable, he can it's, dress up as Brad Major. Well, yeah. he, he won't be uncomfortable. He just thought I was wrong. No, like you, you don't have to. You don't have to. You don't have to, but like it's 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 fun and it's right. encouraged. Get into like, it. Go crazy. Exactly. Um so Stone Productions, we uh, we do a thing. Um, there is, so we're we normally do an eight p.m. show and a midnight show on just Saturday. And this year, just because of like possibilities of like having to have a limited amount of people in the theater, we're adding 
So that's why we're doing a Friday 8 p.m. show, and then we're still doing the double feature. And what we'll do is we some um, – it's called a VIP ticket, and you get – to come to the 8 o'clock show and the midnight show on Saturday. And in the middle um, is when the cast has our cast party. And so you're also invited to come hang out with us. And, yeah, and then that we really pull is. you up on stage at the end and do the time warp with us. So, Which is a really funny story of those little cast things that happen between there. Because you guys did that the last time that I did Rocky. And little did I know this because they were wearing like florals all over their face as they typically do but that cast in between is actually the first time that i met my partner kala oh yeah, yes um, and we didn't even really know each other at the time being but like we just kind of like because you're so so like shy yeah yeah they, I mean, yeah me you know yes. i'm so shy that's how you know you, you so randomly like, met there was a lot that happened that year that <laughs> i was in the show <laughs> why, why are i mean i'm I mean, you said it's sex positive, but is that why everybody's so scandally dressed? I mean, I don't... It's not even scandally. It's just an aspect of... Ex- like, Rocky pushes that bar of expressing that side of you that people are always taught that you shouldn't express that in yourself. Yeah. like, or you should be ashamed of it. Yeah. And-, and it just, like, pushes that barrier of, like, you should not have a fear of exploring that side of what your inner self is telling you to do if you're if you're imagining it if you're dreaming it as james said earlier don't dream it be it and rocky has curated such a space where it's like that it's not only celebrated it's just accepted like Mm -hmm. you can go to the theater and you can be dressed as such an absolute slut (laughs) And people love it. Right, like, yeah. dress like a slut. Be yeah. a slut. Like, I mean, like, his, <laughs> um, Frankenfurter's one, um, in that, in that song, in, uh, the Don't Dream and Be It song, the, um, he, they, I should say, because, like, anyone can play Frankenfurter, um, uh, says, give yourself over to absolute pleasure. Um, and it's, that's literally what a big heart, um, heart line of the show is is like it like whatever it is whatever that means to you just do it and do it and commit to it and like literally just go like go for it and don't and don't feel bad about it like at all it's about just accepting like whether it be yes rocky horror i feel like is a very sex positive yeah. musical it's also about accepting i think it it's accumulated such a cult behind it because it's about accepting those weirdnesses yeah. that are within you like, and don't just like dwell on it. Like that's something that's, that can be very positive. Yeah. Like you're, you are. you're, you want to be like the, you know, you're by day, you're like a truck driver librarian. And then at night you throw your seven inch stilettos on and strut down the catwalk. Like that's literally what it is. It's like, Whatever, whatever it is that you think you need to do behind closed doors, this show is like, no, open them up, come out, and twirl. And, and like, put it and, on the stage. And everyone's like, going to be applauding you for it. So yeah. it's yeah, very, it's very Seven that. inches was, was you know, enough. The, yeah. the, the, you're still a lot of keep sky. saying seven inches. I'm like, where's this going to go? Where's yeah. seven inches going to go? Sky. Oh, it's stiletto. just the tip. It depends on who you are. I'm like, what, what's happening okay. here? Check out Every Carol's time, closet here. This is going to be an awesome. I got to put an E on this one. Nah, screw it. I'm not going to. Where, 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 I mean, but like Rocky Horror does deserve a sense of like, there is a obvious parental guidance yeah. that goes with it. But at the same time, like, we were both talking before we came over, and it's like, we were both very much exposed to Rocky Horror before we were at an age that, like, we probably should have watched Rocky Horror. Yeah. But and how did that affect you, though? Was that bad or good? I, looking back at it, I think that, ironically, the English teacher that let me borrow her movie of this when I was a freshman in high school knew exactly you know subtle things i was a freshman but she knew exactly what she was doing because she probably looked at me and said this kid needs this type of a movie to understand that it's okay to be the person that you are and you can accept who you are no matter what type of things that anybody else might say about you yeah and then for me like it was just because like yeah, my my parents and my family like we're we're they're from a different time where like censorship wasn't as crazy like, I mean 
<clears throat> I was I, I came back from trick or treating. And they were watching it on because that's what they used to show it on Halloween, like on Fox. And it was obviously super edited, so it wasn't the version I finally eventually saw in the theater a couple of years later. I was like, oh, well, that happened. Um, but like, it was just one of those things. Like, it was on, and it was like a like they just you know like they didn't. We were allowed to watch certain. There's a lot of that. Not even just Rocky Horror. There's like some of my friends and I were talking. I was like, I feel like there was a lot of stuff that we were able to watch as kids that like nowadays we would be like, Oh, how dare you show that? And it's like, oh. you just, I don't know. It was different times. It's going backwards. Yeah. Me, oh, a little, maybe. Bad. And rock. But and, you're talking about how like in the seventies when this came out, it was not cheered, but now you come out on the stage and everybody like applauses and thinks you're amazing. Rock so more fans. Right? Yeah. It's just like, I think like when it, like the, the film versions and stuff that's on TV, people are a little, it's a little bit more sensitive now. Like I, I, that's a subject for another day. Yeah. Wait, um, was, there is, there <laughs> even, is in, even in the eighties when that movie was coming out, people were cheering when Rocky yeah. walked out. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it wasn't like it, was, it, it just started happening now. No, it's more yeah. of like, it's more of like a, like what, when you were saying like, um, it, to wrap that kind of, that part of it up is if someone were to message us, like message stone Productions and say, hi, do you think the show is appropriate for my 13 year old? The answer is going to be whatever you feel as a parent is appropriate for that age, that's up to you. I'm not going to say yes or no to that because it's not up to me to do that. I feel like – have I seen kids in the audience at Rocky Horror? Yes, absolutely. There was actually – a dad was carrying out his little daughter in the midnight show because she fell asleep. Um, which, you know, I, for a kid, it meant, That doesn't yeah, happen to most that, people. No, no, she <laughs> fell asleep. And I was just like, I, at first, I, was, initially, you see that, and you're like, oh, what the hell were you thinking, bringing <laughs> this, like, six-year-old? But then I was like, but if I watched this when I was six, I would just be like, oh, look at the pretty people dancing. Like, I wouldn't yeah. know what was going I on. I wear their makeup. Right, like, okay. I want to look like that. And then, you know, right. my, my parents would be like, damn so it, Where, where do we it. find out what we can bring? Oh, so it'll be... Um, on, I'll, we'll, we'll I gotta go to the bathroom. So okay. so <laughs> I'll have to do that. So He's got an I'll, old man bladder it's too. Okay. All of a sudden, I'll he's do that shortly after you. Go. Yeah. So, um, so where? Uh, so three uh, B as well as Stone Productions, like on our social media pages, um, we'll post a. Um, usually, we'll post like a list of what's acceptable to bring to the show, um, and then I know we've we haven't done it. Um, you will always get handed a roll of toilet paper at the Stone <laughs> Production show when you walk in. Um, we've never done the little kits that you can buy just because um, the Collingwood Arts Center, if you've never been, is um, there is a concession area, but it's not that big. Three B's in the uh, um, theater, so they have that whole concession area, and they have, like, an area you can buy, like, little, like, kits of, like, the props. And... Um, but you'll have a list posted. 3B always yeah. has, a, has a list posted. We, and it, the, I'm pretty sure, I can't like 100% speak on it, but I, I'm pretty sure they, 3B does this as well. We There's a list of what you can, and then there's a list of what we really wish you wouldn't. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, uh, Stone Productions will never say you cannot. We'll just say, we highly discourage this item. So what I want to ask, go ahead, Tom. You, you ahead, wouldn't have been able to do it a year ago. It was such a run on toilet paper. <laughs> oh, well, right. Oh, my God. Yeah, no. So we would have. You know, yeah. Everyone, everyone yeah. you would have had one roll per row. Gotcha. <laughs> you had a couple of sheets. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I guess what I want to know is, you know, do you, every single year you produce this show for a reason, for a reason, sorry, for a reason, I assume, other than making a ton of money. So yeah, what? Um, why is it so special to you? So, I, we don't like it. I'm, I'm not even gonna like sugarcoat that. Like the, the show does. Any any anyone anyone who produces the show is gonna make a, a a killer amount of money for their theater company. Um, but for us, it's not really about that. Mainly because we don't see it. <laughs> um, it goes into the building. It goes into the costs of the future productions. It's never anything. Um, the band, they get to see it because musicians get paid. Um, actors do not. So let's work on that theater industry. <laughs> um, but so uh, it's more for, honestly, 
Rocky Horror because of how like how people just come out for it. They love it. They enjoy it. Like it's literally for them. It's for the cast is in the sense of like it's a lot of people's first musical um, that they get involved in. Like wi- like if they're not theater people, like theater people, obviously. But like I, there's so many people who have done Rocky Horror over the few years where it's their first show that they've ever done. And now they're like like us, and they're insanely addicted to it, and like you can't get us off the stage. Um, but it's more for like the the audience. It's such a like classic like event. Um, it's not hard to even call it a musical. It's an event. It is, and, and they just the people like love it, and that's why we do it every year. Is because of it's. We will literally have people messaging us in February. Is Rocky Horror happening this fall? Like, yes. Calm down. <laughs> it's a, um, and there's a lot of people who were really, really, really upset like, that we couldn't, we weren't able to do it last year. I know you guys, you yeah. still did it. We were, um, our venue is just, they, there wasn't really a safe way we could do it, so we just decided not to. But, but yeah, it's, it's, for the, it's for all the weirdos that want to just have a good night out. It is. Rocky <laughs> has truly, like... Like I said earlier, like it's curated in an audience of people who don't feel even necessarily like that the big picture of everything resonates with them. It's like it's for those people that just don't feel accepted on a day to day basis. And I don't know. It's I, I always like find it very interesting to like see the crowds that come out to see Rocky because you have your individuals who come every single year that you do the show. And then you have new people who are just like, and I know nothing of this show. Every single type of person in the human soup comes <laughs> out to see this show. Like there's literally the people that, you know, um, like you, you can be like, oh, they don't know what they're in for, and then you have the people that are like, they probably know this better than I do. Like, right? You want to get up here and do this with me? Like, it's so fascinating because I feel like year after year, even within, I would even call it the Rocky Horror community. Yeah, like, there, you know, it's a thing. That's a thing. There's a whole website about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have people that like they just travel from theater to theater to theater of people who do the show because there's just something within it that. It they, hits them. Yeah, they and... travel from, like, we, uh, Stone Productions has had people come up afterwards and they're like, thank you so much for doing the show. It was awesome. We came from Canada. I'm like, what? Yeah. Like, they're like, yeah. And I was like, oh, like, like, like Windsor? And they're like, no, like, like, we're up, way up there. And they're like, we just found it randomly on, um, the ticketing, uh, agent we use is, uh, brown paper tickets. Uh, it's a fair trade. So, like, everywhere uses it. And you can, Sometimes if you just search it, like, they're like, yeah, we just were searching, like, Rocky Horror one day, and they're like, eh, Toledo's only, like, four hours away. Wow, it's so nice. Toledo fans are absolutely spoiled. Yeah. Oh. Well, oh, I mean, yeah. in the theater community in general, I would honestly say Toledo fans are truly spoiled. Yeah, I mean, we've got, we, the, we've got some of the best, like, theater in the area, and it's, like... We have so many companies. So in much theater. that it warrants having a podcast about it. I mean, yeah. honestly. So, yes. Like, it really, I mean, like, it's awesome. It's awesome to know that, like, you wouldn't, like, most people don't know that. Like, they don't know, like, I mean, there's, you could, you could almost, if you really planned it right, if you wanted, you could go see a show every single weekend of the year in this city. Yeah. <laughs> or surrounding. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. And, like, not, surrounding yeah. Area, like, I mean, like, Northwest Ohio, I should say. Yeah. Has, it, it go go across the border. Go yeah. across Croswell. Yeah. Well. Yep. Go to, yeah. 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 Michigan's Honestly. got great place. I mean, yeah, like, Kurt's Cleveland's got, not very far away. Monroe's like, Ohio, like this yep. whole area in general is really saturated it's with the insane. arts, which is good. Yeah. And, this is why it was hard for me and Tom and Ron to not just get sucked in and start loving this stuff. Yeah. Because the talent is here, too. It's not just that we have shows. And it's wild to think mm. that they're... It, it's wild and it's humbling to yeah. just know that there is so much raw talent in such a condensed area. And, I mean, I don't know a single... Per, well, I shouldn't say I don't know, but, like, in talking to different directors, it's very interesting to see, like, how many different communities really do mesh together 
and where you start to see that overlap of, oh, those people of that company also do shows with this company and also do shows with this company. And, That's oh, great. well, yeah. they're down That's... here in the South, but they also go up here in the North. Like, I was just going to say, too, like, I, I, like, love that. Like, um, when... Because, like, the, the, you know, like, you have your, like, the theater companies, and this is a good thing. You have your, like, your your core people that are usually, like, they do shows with that company all the time. And that's good, because that's how you build that rapport, and that's how you get that that community. And um, But it's awesome when you do crossovers. Like, I love when I get the opportunity to do, I don't get it often, because, like, like I said, this is rare that I'm in a show and not directing it, but... I love when I have that opportunity to like go somewhere else, like go do something with like the rep or the village or like, I've not, I actually not have not been able to do anything with 3B, but I would love to. And, um, and I also love when anyone from another company like comes over and does a show with us. And I was like, yes, please do that. And then, and then take, take your experience back with, you know, and like tell them like, Oh my God, it was so fun. You should, you should right. do it sometime. Exactly. You really it's good should. for the actors too, because you start working with different companies, different directors, different styles. Yeah. yeah it's like, good for um, them to, it's, it's a real like fairly professional environment. I've done, I've done right. a lot of, I've done, um, I've only been on stage in one, um, show with cutting edge, mm-hmm. but like I've done makeup for awesome. their shows before and I've done makeup for the rep before. And I just, it's, it's all, that even, even that, even not necessarily being in the show, but being a part of it in some capacity is awesome. Cause you get to meet like new people. You get to yeah. like see uh, my favorite thing as someone who directs is I love to watch other people's work. Like I love to see their process. Cool. Like it's awesome to me. Cause it's just like you, I'm like, Oh my, I would never have thought to do it that way. Dylan, one, one last pitch. Then we're going to stop because we're going to, we could talk for hours here. Yeah. If we don't shut oh, up. It's so so, so, what, so <laughs> one, yeah. One more pitch. Why do we, why does somebody, why is this show important to you? And why do people need to see it? Uh, Oh, this show is important to me because I think at the time in my life that I was introduced to Rocky horror, I didn't know it then, but as an adult now and as someone who just loves this show, like there is truly a message as far as like the importance behind accepting who you are in your weirdness and understanding that what makes you different from somebody else is not a negative thing and it can be a very positive thing. And there are going to be people who celebrate you for who you are. There's going to be, there is going to be people who don't celebrate you for who you are. But as long as you're living your truth, that's all that matters. Like, and you know, obviously not to give too much away in the musical, but like Frankenfurter comes to his demise at some point. But I don't think that there was ever a moment in his journey that he didn't live a life that he wanted to live. Like he, Just he did everything yeah. that he wanted to do and more. Unapologetically. Too. <laughs> Unapologetically. And I think that's sometimes that like something we need to remember in our daily lives is that, you know, there are going to be people that don't appreciate you for the things that you are. And there are going to be people who appreciate you for the things that you are. But at the end of the day, If you are happy with yourself and you are happy with the life that you are living, that's truly the message to take away from it because we only have one life in this life. And unlike Frankenfurter, who's an alien, like we get the luxury of knowing those things then and getting to celebrate our oddities that are our daily life things. Because in, in anything like that's what sets us aside from the normal. And very much like with Brad and Janet, where they're so normal, yeah, you get all these other characters that are larger than life. But they get they get their they get their freakiness and weirdness pulled out of them too. Like, and they do. That's <laughs> and that's another conversation. Of they do. They get they have their moment where they they let go and um and I feel like even in the end of the show, they even though it does end a little um. I don't want to say somber, but like it has a little bit of a like a. How does it end? That's yeah, yeah, it, I did, like, or, and it doesn't really end actually. Um, but like they, they, they're new people. They're they're also they were they didn't know they were on a journey, but they were on a different kind of journey. Like they obviously were physically on one, but then um, their personalities get completely like pulled in a different direction. And they get shown a whole nother way of life and then leave 
like new people. Like they're different. They're completely changed. And that's one thing that um, for me is like for with this show is like I it it it's one of the first things that I saw that I was like, huh. Everything that I thought was not acceptable or strange about myself is actually kind of okay and cool and people like that. So And if anything too, there will be a crowd of people out there who like that. Yeah. And I think that's also a really important thing to talk about when we do talk about Rocky Horror is the community that Rocky Horror that Rocky Horror like curates on its own is very much its own sense of acceptance because it is such a <laughs> wide spectrum. Yeah, it's one of the first of community. That room, like, that theater, it was actually the first time I ever saw it was at the Mommy Indoor Theater, but it was the shadow cast and where the screen is being the movie's played and people are just like acting it out. And it was the first time I ever was in a room where there was like heterosexual, bisexual, homosexual, transsexual, like gender fluid, queer, like every every type of person was in the same room and they were having the best time and they were partying together. And it was really cool. And it was it was like one of those things where like I remember the movie was ending and the credits were rolling and I like had that moment where I was like, I don't wanna go home. <laughs> like I wanna stay and hang out with these people. Like I love this. So it was just kind of how the show ends too. It's like every in the the characters are like we they have to go we back don't to want they're like now. we don't want this <laughs> to end like what do we now what right <laughs> so 